a very good day and hope everyone is safe and healthy and welcome to our podcast hi my name is pavindraj arnagaraja nim b04191870 let me introduce to my group members audrey and pat hi i'm audrey and jayi with nim b04198015 hi i'm pat rahman with nim b04198023 nice okay It is great to see you guys again after several weeks of another amazing discussion and I am eagerly waiting to discuss our topic which is about reproductive management in cattle. Yes, I'm excited to talk about and discuss discuss more about our topic today. Yep, I'm excited too as our topic for today's section is very interesting. So let's begin. Okay, let's begin. So before jumping into the conversation, let us let's get to know about our topic. So nowadays, one of the obstacle faced by ruminant farmers in developing their business is reproductive problems due to low productivity causing the livestock population to not increase. That's true. And animal reproduction is a physical process of livestock producing offspring. This physio- physiological process includes the formation of sex cells uh, such as gametes, the release of gamet cells and the union of male gametes and female gametes. And the development of zygote into fetus and parthus. Yeah, as we have learned before, parturition is defined as the process of giving birth. It occurs at the end of the gestation period or pregnancy as it is more commonly called and it is a very critical management phase in the production cycle of livestock. Parturition is the culmination of mammalian reproduction, a task essential for the survival of the species. After a period of uterine quiescence to allow fetal growth and development, Changes occurs in myometrial contractility that results in efficient expulsions of the fetus. Yes, uh, and parturition is an interesting biological process in the sense that the uterus that was quiescent during the entire pregnancy starts contracting and the cervix that was tightly contracted relaxes sufficiently to allow the passage of the young one to the world outside the mother's womb. passing through the birth canal. Moreover, you guys know that the major reproductive problems were anesthesis, RB, retention of fetal membrane, and abortions, which contributed more than 80% of the total affected animals. However, dystocia, vaginal prolapse, endometritis, and pyometra are also found to affect the fertility of dairy cattle. So do you guys know that the cause of infertility in a cow is caused by the improper timing of insemination breeding too early or too late so frequently inseminating cattle based on secondary signs of estrus so high incidence of uterine infection improper insemination technique or the use of semen damage during storage or handling as well as lack of good nutrients Most importantly, low breeding efficiency has long been recognized as one of the major problem affecting the efficiency of milk production. So actually I have a I have a question. Why is the management of reproductive cow is so important? Hmm, so in my opinion, I would say that the management of cows pre and post parturition is important because it will influence the reproductive ability of the cow. So proper handling at the time of parturition and postpartum in the hyphus is very influential on the continuity of the next livestock reproduction process or the subsequent pregnancy of the cow. Then damage to the reproductive organs is very vulnerable during the birth process and then early after giving birth. Handling of birth requires proper treatment so that there is no damage or reproductive disorders. Uh, reproductive disorders that are often occur especially the cases of endometritis therefore actually a good handling at the time of parturition and postpartum is very decisive to avoid the reproductive disturbance in the brood stock 
then uh, are there any management that we can do in the pre pasturation of cows to prevent those reproductive problems yes there are so actually before calving the hyphens are monitored for calving signs so check for like uh, gestational age and prepared for calving so like pregnant cows will be transferred to individual calving pens preferably like within one to two weeks before the expected calving date yeah so like ample amount of drinking water is given and laxative feed and general supply of bedding will be provided in the calving pen so the condition of the hyphers are very much are uh, monitored closely and they are taking in you know, very good action as well um so regarding the feeding of the hyphers during parturition like do you know like are there any requirements in the feeding process or we can actually just feed them at any time before parturition there is actually a feeding schedule for hyphers that are commonly used so feeding of pre-parturian cows can be done in the late morning around 11 a.m. to noon and again at night from 9.30 to 10 p.m. This is often done to encourage calving during the next day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. where its problem is more likely to be identified and assistant more likely to be available. Uh, Pavin, just now you mentioned that pregnant cow will be transferred to individual individual pens. So, are there any preparations that need to be done for the parturition environment? Yes, Fatou. There is preparation that needs to be done, which is whereby the parturition environment is normally prepared by sprinkling bedding, dry straw, dry grass in the cow shed. We have sufficient thickness here. So then an observer will be needed to be there to observe the parturition process closely and provide assistance when the cow is needed. So a person will be there all the time to, to keep an eye on the cow. So I have another question. What about after calving? Do we just leave the hyphen alone after calving? Uh, no, according to the literature, normally like after calving, the other and then the hind quarter of the hypha uh, they should be washed with lukewarm water uh, that contains the antiseptic solution of potassium permanganate lotion this is the most commonly used antiseptic solution and then after that the other and hind quarter are then dried with clean cloth then the cows may be milked to relieve the pressure from the other two the postpartum cows they were normally treated with antihelminthic vitamins and then antibiotics and then sometimes um, veterinarians also give them oxytocin for the placenta retention and treatment and then i would like to ask uh, are there like any other precautions that we need to pay attention to during postpartum tuition yes uh, we need to ensure that placenta is expelled uh, within 12 to 24 hours after parturition If it's not expelled in 24 hours, seek the help of veterinarian to be removed manually. The cow should be monitored carefully for signs of any metabolic disorders like milk fever, grass tetany, ketosis, acidosis, and should be treated immediately. The cow also need to be monitored for clinical signs of postpartum disease in order to prevent the worsen of disease such as decreased appetite, weight loss, reduction in milk yield, fever, depression, dehydration, cold ears, false smelling of vaginal discharge, and swollen mammary glands. So, what about the calf after it is born? So, after the calf is born, the mucus, which is the sticky fluid, can be seen from the nose and the mouth. Uh, all this will need to be cleaned immediately by the vet and then the breathing of the calf uh, they need to be checked also to ensure that the calf is breathing normally after birth then the umbilical cord of the calf is cut approximately 4 to 5 cm from the abdomen and then they dip the umbilical cord into iodine solution and this is to help reduce the risk of serious infections in newborn animals Um, then I heard that 
we should allow the calf to suckle from its mother as soon as possible after it is able to stand up. Uh, do you all know like why is it important to do so immediately after the birth? Yes, it is very important to do immediately after birth. This is so that the calf can obtain the immunoglobulin that is present in the cholesterol. So the yellowish milk which is rich in immunoglobulin that is produced right after birth. So this is like quite important to support their growth and optimism, their welfare. So calves that do not receive adequate uh, quantity or quality cholesterol in the right time frame will be compromised and more likely to contract into infections. And what about when the calf is not breeding of the ball? If the calf is not breeding, one must act immediately by pumping the chest of calf uh, with palm of your hand. Then ensure the calf's head is lower than its back. Then insert a straw into the calf nose uh, in an attempt to make it sneeze and start breathing. So guys, uh, we've been talking all about this management in pre and post partus period. But do you guys know that uh, choosing the right breed is very influential uh, in the success of the cattle reproduction management. There are several types of cattle that are suitable to be kept in Indonesia, including PO, which is Ongol Peranakan cattle, Brahman cattle, and Bali cattle. So, as for example, Bali cattle are the most popular type of beef cattle in Indonesia because they have several advantages, uh, including being easy to adapt and be able to take advantage of low quality feed and the most important one, have a high fertility rate. Oh, barley cattle. Okay, that is quite interesting. Should we only choose based on the breed or is there any other factors regarding this? Um, no, there is actually a general criteria in choosing a proper host for easier reproduction management in cows. So factors such as relatively fast growth rate um, has a good history record in breeding, uh, which is like derived from superior parent breed. And then easy to adapt to the situation, conditions and the climate as well as the environment. And then also cows that has a high birth rate and weaning rate. And cows that has a high fertility rate with weight balance are also the criteria to choose a suitable host. Uh, what if you what if you want it to be specific to female hosts? Alright. So I believe I've read about it somewhere and it were factors of a good female. Uh, cow overall appearance accordance with the appearance of the same breed, healthy and strong in condition. So the body is wide and deep with is according to the BDS BC, PCS. The legs are relatively short, the body is solid and the shape is compact. The other is large and symmetrical, when it is touched, it feels soft. The nipples are quite large and symmetrical. The temperament is active but gentle and has a good parental characteristic and comes from parents who have good growth and production capabilities. Oh, I see. Then, um, how about choosing the right male? Are there also like any other requirements? Okay, so for males, the characters, the characteristic of a good male are healthy and strong in conditions, wide and deep body shapes, legs are relatively short, solid and compact. So compact body. So as mentioned in the female one. So and also for male, the testes are normal and symmetrical masculinity appearance and active towards the females and uh, comes from parents who have the ability to produce children with good growth rate. Uh, so I believe we also have to separate them by age, right? Is that true and what is the reason behind it? Okay, so the rearing system for young cattle is grouped based on their age meaning young cattle, namely cattle aged 4 to 6 months and young cattle aged 6 to 12 months. Uh, cattle aged 6 months to 1 year are kept in group cages without ties or special cages for heifers. 
This is intended so that the cows are free to move. Besides that, uh, this separation is expected to be able to maintain the libido of young bulls and prevent any inbreeding or early coitus that are too young. Oh, so why is early breeding bad for, for the cattle? Um, I would say that early breeding that is too young can cause the breeders to have difficulty giving birth because the female cause they are still young and then besides that um, it can cause the reproductive organs of the breeders to be damaged uh, this can be due to the difficulties during calving and then marriages that are too young can also cause abortions because the parents they are unable to bear the burden of the womb at that young age all right okay now we're going to enter the closing part whereby we can conclude that the management of a cattle reproduction is very serious so as it can be protected lack of management can strike cattle at an alarmingly fast rate so which makes detection and treatments to be very difficult so but with a good management program and a regular testing will be very helpful to prevent issues related to these reproduction and pathuration problems so wow so we have done another discussion about cattle so this was a very good great a uh, discussion is it was a very great discussion as well so we have learned a lot so that's all from us thank you for lending your ears throughout this podcast and we hope that you have learned something new from this podcast today thank you again stay safe and stay healthy bye bye everyone thank you bye 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 bye